On any given day in Nanaimo, over 600 people live on the street. With Nanaimo supplying many programs to help this issue, we are still seeing the numbers of those sleeping rough grow. The Navigator takes a closer look at this issue by meeting with the Island Crisis Care Society to see what they are doing and what you can do to help. So my name is Corey Corfield. I'm the Assistant Executive Director with Island Crisis Care Society. Uh, and we are a nonprofit that's operated in Nanaimo for the last 30 years. And we support those who are experiencing or at risk of homelessness um, through a variety of programs, um, providing housing and care to those in need. Within our scope of programming, we talk about the spectrum of care. So we offer, we have about 12 programs now, and we kind of, um, when we, like I say, we use the spectrum of care. So we go from um, crisis stabilization uh, and shelter type housing all the way up to long-term supportive housing, um, where we're providing um, housing that's supported 24-7. So for, for people who have faced barriers to, to housing in the past, whether it be through uh, mental health issues, sometimes physical health issues, uh, or substance use, um, we provide uh, housing that gives stability and support um, to those who, who need it um, in order to, to move forward in their lives. The great thing about a community the size of Nanaimo is that there are a ton of different organizations offering a variety of services. And what we know in this sector is that it's not a one-size-fits-all issue. So it takes all of these organizations and all of these solutions working together um, and doing things. Everybody does things a little bit differently and that's great because it means that there's a fit for everybody that needs help. Um, so I would say you know, to people who are wanting to help, um, or who may, you know, potentially may come across somebody in a crisis situation, learn what's available in the community. Um, spend some time just Googling and um, looking up some of the different resources. There's um, Salvation Army's New Hope Centre. We have some, some programs through um, the New Samaritan Place and um, some others that, that we have um, that support people. We've got... Um, couple of warming centers now in town and some other great organizations. So just look up what's in town even before you come across somebody who needs crisis. Just be aware of what supports are there. There aren't a lot of shelter options in, in the city. There's a lot of great groups who are doing really good work to support, um, but there's not there's not a ton, there's not enough spaces for people who need shelter. Um, so it's really hard for people and when you do happen to see somebody in crisis, be there, um, talk to them, don't just say, hey, did you check out that place down the street? Like actually say, how, what, how can I help you get to that place? How can I help you to find that resource um, and, you know, pass that, that information along. One of the challenges in our city is that we have a very elongated city um, and so some of the resources are across the, across the city from others. And so it's really challenging. And we see people all the time carrying all of their belongings as they like walk across town. And that happens every day. We've got folks who are struggling just for their survival. They're, you know, everything they own is in their backpack or in their shopping cart or in, on their bike or whatever it is. And then they also have to walk literally from one side of the city to another in order to, you know, get a meal at one place um, and get, you know, housing support in another place. And so recognizing the reality of what it means to use those resources that are available and maybe helping, you know, a bus ticket or helping them to find a way to get them or to get there or, you know, asking if you can bring them a meal or, or you know, just, just asking what they need. I think for any of us, when we are in a time of need, in a time of crisis, if somebody would come to us and say, hey, I see you're in a crisis, what do you need? That's huge. Like, instead of assuming what somebody needs or assuming the best thing to help them, just ask. Um, and I think that, yeah, that's huge. So, you know, we want to think about the quick fixes in supporting people. And those are, you know, supporting through donations and, and you know, giving and, and helping and those sorts of things are great. And they're absolutely, they have to happen. Um, but compassion is, is the thing that I think sometimes is lacking and that 
really makes a difference for people. Um, a willingness to hear people's stories and understand where they're coming from. It's not just about, you know, I saw this person on the street and they were homeless and they, you know, needed a meal, so I gave them a meal, which is really important. But give them the meal and then find out who they are. Talk to them. Um, give them the time of day. Like, learn about who they are and how, what they need long term for support, which is really challenging. Like in, in the society that we have right now, we don't like to make connections with strangers. We have a hard time going outside of our comfort zone. But honestly, like from our experience as an organization, those are the things that make a big difference. Um, when we take the time to actually care for each other, not just try to stick a band-aid on something, um, but actually, you know, come around a person and, and care and love them. Um, that is, that's what really makes a difference for folks.